Welcome to Good Game Spawn Point, the show for younger gamers by gamers. I'm Hex. I am Darren. And I'm Barjo. Darren, has your mobility base plate healed from last week's Robo Wars? Oh, affirmative. Thank you, Hex. I, I administered a few minor self repairs with parts I harvested from Barjo's PC. Oh, I was wondering why it wouldn't boot up this morning. Well, not even that can upset me today, Darren, because we're going to have a look at the wonderful Rayman Legends. We also flash back to an earlier era of gaming with a remake of an old classic. It's called Flashback. Nice. <laughs> the original Flashback was released in 1992 for the Amiga, Mega Drive and Super Nintendo. Oh, the 90s, weren't they great? Oh, let's talk about the 90s for a bit. So oh, one of my yeah. favourite all-time games was rock and roll racing because it was really cool. You'd upgrade all your vehicles as you go and you go on these <laughs> yeah. really cool tracks and sometimes you fall off when you go on the bumps. You realise to take those corners really nice and slowly and you also, get the hovercraft at the end of the hovercraft. I these weird ball kind of things that would shoot out and they would home in on your enemies. And, uh, the they were quite hard to control though. Oh, and then there was Micro Machines. Hex here with all the news from around the gaming world. A Japanese gamer who goes by the alias Kuroko has set a world record time for Tetris line racing. In line racing, players attempt to clear 40 lines in the fastest possible time. Kuroko became the first person to achieve the feat in under 20 seconds, posting a blistering 19.68 second time. The footage you are watching is happening in real time and has not been sped up. In more speed gaming news, a gamer by the name of Cosmo Wright has set the new world's fastest time for a speed run of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Wright finished the game in a blazing fast time of 19 minutes and 15 seconds, shaving off five seconds from the previous record. It normally takes about 40 hours to finish the game. Congratulations to both Kuroko and Cosmo. Those are some of my favourite 90s games. Oh, <clears throat> shall we review Flashback? Yeah. Oh, affirmative. Let me transfer some of its history for you. In 1992, a game called Flashback was released to much acclaim. It was known as a cinematic platformer. Uh, the screen would remain still while the character moved through it. This, in part, allowed for a noteworthy animation technique called rotoscoping, making a character's movement and animation appear more fluid than ever before. History lesson complete. Hmm. Thanks, Darren. Uh, this flashback, however, is a modern remake or reboot of the original. Ah, oh, Hex, the original was so good, any sort of reboot is not going to live up to its legacy. Oh, come on, Darren, that's not the reviewer's spirit. Let's go into this with open minds and willing gaming fingers. Oh, all right, but only because there are lasers. That first flashback was revolutionary. And before we go any further into this one, we should warn Spawnlings and Spawnlings' parents that while this game is rated PG, there is quite a bit of shooting in it, and your main weapon is a gun. Mm, good call, Bajo. This remake comes with new controls, graphics, story explanations, and gameplay tweaks. You wake up with no memory of what's going on and soon discover a message you've made for yourself. Conrad, I am you, or at least I was taking parts of your memory. I don't have time to explain the details. You must get to New Washington and find Ian. He can help you. As you progress through the game, you'll start to piece together exactly what happened. To do this, you'll need to solve some basic puzzles, do a bit of platforming, and also fight off lots of robots and other tough enemies. One of the biggest improvements to the game is the control scheme. It's now much easier to jump, shoot and interact with objects in the world. Plus, you can aim in any direction on the 2D plane. Yeah, that's true, Darren. Most of the controls are now much more modern and responsive, although I did find climbing a little bit fiddly still. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's still much better than the original. I particularly remember even just pulling out your weapon and using it in that game was very challenging. The challenge here really is about the combat. Yes, you'll often be forced into tough situations and have to fight your way out. Naturally, the game looks much better now too. I love the design of this futuristic world. You can tell I've taken the science fiction ideas from the original and then really fleshed them out. Yeah, at first I wasn't sold on the look of the game, but the further I got into it, the more I liked the art style. Mm. They've also improved the storytelling. Everything now makes much more sense than the original. The voice acting, however, is pretty average. Um, are you okay? Do I look okay? Hey, are you him then? Uh, maybe. I certainly could be. 
Well, you sound like him. Well, at least it has voice acting, Darren. This is true. Some areas of the game aren't developed very well, though, like the skill tree, which felt really tacked on. And you know what, guys? I found myself rage quitting a lot in this game. It gets really hard. Rage quit alert. Rage quit alert. Attach alarm. Attach. Wait, wait, attach, attach what? Attach. Darren made me make this alarm for him so we can warn the spawnlings every time there's a game, which might make them rage quit. Oh, well, this certainly is one of those games. All of those glass floors and the enemies just kept coming, Bajo. Yeah. Yes, even with the improved controls, I struggled hex. I felt like the animations weren't keeping up with what I was trying to get my character to do. I also kept forgetting about those exploding drones. Mm. Ah! Whoa! Ah! Sadly, I think even if you love the original, you'll find it hard to make it through this game. I like the steps they've taken to modernise it, but it just didn't feel polished enough to really keep me interested, so I'm giving it five. Yeah, I'm going to give it five as well. Darren, can I please turn that light off now? It's starting to twitch my eye a little bit. Negative. I have a new alert on standby. This retro-inspired game has given me the urge to travel back to another classic year in gaming. <gasps> Evacuate. <gasps> Evacuate. <laughs> Manipulating <laughs> space-time continuum. It is now September 1989. Earthlings are looking in awe at 4769 Castalia, the first asteroid to ever be visualized by radar. Batman is catapulting superhero films into the mainstream. What are you? I'm Batman. Music lovers are listening to Roxette on their newfangled CD players. La 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 I've got the look. And the noble knight Arthur was rescuing his princess from the clutches of evil in Ghouls and Ghosts. Ghouls and Ghosts. Arthur must brave his way through terrifying locations like graveyards and burning villages. But it was the size of the enemies that was even more frightening. One minute he's trying to escape the mouths of giant gargoyles. Then the next, he's climbing on the back of mighty beasts. Some players criticise the game for being too hard, which was understandable since enemies shattered Arthur's fragile armour with a single touch. Worse still were the magicians who hid in chests, turning him into either an old man or a helpless duck. But by far the most punishing moment was when he finally reached the boss, only to be told he needed a special weapon that was only available on the second playthrough of the game. Outrageous! Although some players weren't up to the challenge, those with reflexes of steel considered Ghouls and Ghosts to be one of the best platformers of the 1980s. Arthur would later go on to star in a SNES sequel, and he also provided the template for the franchise's PS2 reimagining, Maximo. Oh, well, I'd better teleport back to the studio! And I go, na 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 na, I've got the look! All right, we should probably answer some of these questions, mm. Badge. Uh, first up, we've got this one from Golden Shadow, who is in Melbourne, Victoria. <laughs> Hi, GGSP. I love your show. I never miss an episode. Anyway, I have three questions. One, all of my friends are telling me that Minecraft is going to come out on the PS3 in a couple of years. Is this true? Two, in Minecraft, yes, it's all about Minecraft. <laughs> there is the horse update, but is an update like that going to come out on Xbox 360 edition? Three, sorry if this is taking a while. Are there any games that are out that you have not played at all? I do not have any faces for you. From Golden Shadow. P.S. I lied. Ah! Hex, could you please do these faces? Yeah. Mm. Uh. Bajo, could you please do these faces? <laughs> Thanks. Bye. P.P.S. Please answer. I've been wondering this for ages, and it's my first time asking you guys a question. Thanks. Bye. Well, Golden Shadow, we have good news for you and for all PS3 owners because Minecraft has officially been announced for PS3. Yay! <laughs> what? what was that? It was a party popper. Oh, can I've, I have one? I've got a whole stash I, here just I, in case there are any special I, announcements that I, pop up. Can I have one? No. Can I have one? No. Please. All right, you can have one. Thank you. But it's only for special occasions. <laughs> What did I just say? <laughs> well, you're not getting any more can because clearly this you don't okay, know the right opportunity to use done. a party popper. Can I have more? Can I have another one, please? No. Can I have one more? No. Puppy dog face won't work either. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, back to the question. I think that's actually been one of our most asked questions by you spawnlings. So we're happy to finally be able to share the good news. And it's actually even better news than that because it's also coming out on the upcoming PS4 and the PS Vita. Which would have been a perfect opportunity to release a bunch of poppers if we had some, which we do, but someone is hoarding them over there and not giving me any. Look, if you behave so... yourself, for the rest of our spawn point, then you can pop some more, okay? No promises, but I will do my best. And yes, the PlayStation versions are being handled by the same team that make the Xbox version. So we assume they'll all be roughly the same in terms of features. And it'll be great on Vita, I think, because I think it'll be a much more fully featured, fleshed out version than the current Pocket Edition. As for if the Xbox version will get the horse update, well, from what we understand, the plan is to keep updating the console version with features from the PC version. So I'd say that we'll definitely be adding horses in a future update, probably. And finally, while we do play a lot of games, there just are so many released these days that there's no way we can play everything that comes out. So, yes, there's probably a lot of games we've never played, really. Yes, and, but I say we usually play anything that's worth a look. <laughs> Indeed, but uh, I think we should move on to, uh, to this one. You can't see because of all the party poppers yeah. on the keyboard. Maybe yeah. you should just put oh, some over here. Uh, this one from Maybe Connor, uh, who is in Brisbane, Queensland. You are not getting my party poppers. Can you do a good horse impression just that while we're at it, while we're talking about horses? I can, actually. Give me a go. <clears throat> it's all in the um the, the little snorty thing yeah, afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was very good. Thanks. I can do a really good goat. Do you want to hear? Yeah. How does pulling your lips out change this like the, the sound? It's <laughs> <laughs> really good. Thanks. I mean, if you put like if if we just upset like a a goat sound right now, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it sounds exactly like that. <laughs> If people are expecting Star Wars for Disney Infinity, does that mean there will be Indiana Jones as well, or did Disney only buy Star Wars, not LucasArts? Ah, oh, that's a good question, Connor. I hadn't even thought about the possible indie playset, but yes, Disney did buy Lucasfilm, which includes the intellectual property to Indiana Jones, so there's certainly a good possibility that they'd do that. There might be a slight complication because Paramount Pictures still own the distribution rights to Indiana Jones films, which means they have the rights to sell and distribute the film, but I think Disney owned the actual intellectual property, which means they own the idea and name of India. Oh, it hurts my head! <laughs> so, oh, I, I, you know, I don't really understand all the legal mumbo jumbo about rights. Mm. Yeah, well, fingers crossed they can just make it happen. Yeah. I think an indie playset would be epic. But uh, anyway, we're on the topic of uh, Disney Infinity, so let's move on to this one from Isabel, who is in Victoria Point, Queensland. Mm. Why don't you guys tell us that some games are different on 3DS than the ones you review? I wanted Disney Infinity like you had with the boat battles, but I got the 3DS version and it's just Mario Party but with Disney characters. Anyway, Hex rocks, Barger was weird, and Darren is the funniest. See ya. It's, it's weird. Is weird a compliment? I think weird is a compliment now, Hex. Well, I, I think, think weird is kind of cool. You're weird in a lovable way. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Can I have some party poppers? No. Right. Well, Isabel, sorry to hear that, but we didn't actually have the 3DS version, so we can't comment on how different it was. Well, maybe we should have made a bigger point about that in the review, but we did at least list the versions of the game that our review was based on mm. uh, with a little uh, infographic that was put mm. up during the review. Uh, oh, it's the telephone. Yeah. I wonder if this would be Darren. It's always Darren. Probably Darren. It's always Darren. <laughs> um, I'm we, I Answer bet. it. Hello, Bantu speaking. Hi, and Hex. Hello. As a rule of thumb, it's quite rare that 3DS versions of games are exactly the same as those released on home consoles. Mm -hmm. Handheld versions of games tend to offer slightly different styles of play, games a human can pick up and put down quickly if they're on the bus, for instance. Also, the 3DS simply isn't powerful enough to run exactly the same games that run on larger home consoles. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for that, Darren. Mm, we Hi. should be more clear about this sort of okay. thing. Okay, we will. Right, uh, let's move on to this one from Hop4424, who is in Hopping Land, no noobs, uh, in Victoria. Darren's just sent me an email and it's just a picture of his face that's angry. Oh, well, you could just put it as your desktop background. Oh, is he smiling? It's, <laughs> hard, <laughs> it's hard to tell, isn't it? Hi, GGSP. I love your show. I tune into it every week. I've got three questions for you. One, is Super Mario 3D World for 3DS or exclusive to Wii U? Two, I'm getting Super Smash Brothers, but I don't know which one to get, Wii U or 3DS. Can you help me? Three, what are some good games for Wii U? Can you tell me? Thanks, if you answer. P.S. Bajo is the best. Hex is, okay. And Darren is a super duper mega noob. Bajo, do these. <coughs> <coughs> Thanks! 
Well, Hop4424, you're a tad confused there, but I can see why. So to be clear, Super Mario 3D World is the new Mario game coming out on the Wii U at the end of the year, and that's exclusive to Wii U. Whereas Super Mario 3D Land is the recent Mario game for the 3DS, and that is exclusive to the 3DS. Yeah, so 3D World is Wii U, 3D Land is 3DS. Yeah. As for which upcoming Smash Brothers to get, seeing as we haven't really had a chance to play either of them, it's hard to say at this point. Absolutely, but like we were saying earlier, the 3DS version is likely to be a similar but fairly different game compared to the Wii U one, a cut down, smaller version of it. So we'd say the Wii U one is probably the better looking and more fully fleshed out featured game to get. As for good Wii U games, well, if you're talking about exclusives, then we'd definitely recommend Pikmin 3. That's a great game. Yeah. And we're taking a look at the wonderful 101 at the moment, and from what we've seen so far, it's shaping up well. We'll uh, have a review of that in the show very soon. Mm. And you'll probably quite enjoy New Super Mario Brothers, and later in the show, we're going to have a look at Rayman Legends, so stick around for that. Mm. OK, well, I think we've got time for one more, so how about we go with this one from Kerry, uh, who is in Pottsville, New South Wales. Could it be Kerry O'Brien? I don't think so. There's, there's more than one person called Kerry in the world, so... Oh, no, it's not. I've got my Kerry tracker on and he's above us. Hey, GGSP. Do you know any Minecrafty games for the Wii and the 3DS? Darren is a mega super noob. Bargo is OK. Hex is OK as well. GGSP, do this. Well, Kerry, I actually can't think of anything that's a bit Minecrafty on the Wii. Oh, what is there? There's got to be something. To go. Oh, it's. I bet that. I bet that is Darren. I'll answer it. It's always Darren. <laughs> Yellow. Well, uh, as Bartu just it's said, on the Wii there isn't really much there, but on the 3DS there's a game we've been playing a little bit of recently, an eShop title called Steam World Dig. It's a nifty little platformer where you play as a little robot Jeez. in a western town where you get to dig a mine in a randomly generated world. It's kind of like Terraria meets Super Metroid. Mm. Oh, that sounds really awesome. And that's yeah. on 3DS, you say? Affirmative. Oh, Baja, we should probably do a review of that. That sounds really cool. Yeah, we haven't done a 3DS game in ages. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, thanks, Darren. On that oh. note, we are out of time for this week. Bye, Darren. Goodbye. If you have any questions you'd like to ask us, then you can send them in here. Bye, Darren. Hex guys, pop a party popper now? No. Can I pop a party popper? No. Can I pop it? Quick, quick, quick! All right, quick party poppers! One. 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 Go! Ah, <laughs> go! Go! Oh, oh, quick, another one! Where's this? Uh, it's quite funny. <laughs> oh, look at how many left of this. This is crazy. It's wild abandon. <laughs> We've got so. I have one more. <laughs> ah, where'd you go? Bajo? crazy for a while there. Yeah. Rayman Legends has been a long time coming. It was originally going to be a launch title for the Wii U, but then it got delayed and then it got delayed again. And now almost a full year later, it's finally out. And not just on the Wii U, it's on almost every gaming platform. But was it worth the wait, Bajo? It absolutely was, Hex. This game is full of creativity and polish. Let's have a look. <laughs> Each level gives you the very simple task of getting Rayman and his friends safely to the exit. But the beauty of this game is that there are so many locations and scenarios. The game always feels fresh. Being a big music lover, my favourites are the levels laid out to the beat of pop songs. <laughs> Oh, Blackberry, bam, bam. <laughs> yeah, those levels were so great. I almost wish the whole game was music themed. But then those song levels are all really fast paced, a bit like those smartphone endless running games. So I'm glad there's plenty of thoughtful platforming here too. Like these stealth levels where you have to sneak around, staying out of sight of the cameras. <laughs> And there's a bit of a James Bond vibe with those spy themes and the henchmen in wetsuits. And it's such a good-looking game, isn't it, Hex? Yeah, it's stunning. We're used to a lot of flashy 3D graphics today, but all of Rayman's locations have a hand-drawn look that adds so much personality. I love those little touches, like the way the baddies are roughing up the teensies before you rescued them. Yeah! 
Originally, when this game was being made specifically for Wii U, it featured a multiplayer touchscreen mode. An extra player was able to use swiping gestures on the gamepad to make the flying character Murphy do things like cut ropes to drop platforms down. Yes, and since then it's been rejigged to work on all of the consoles. Now the regular players can control Murphy with a button press while they're jumping around. I found it a little tricky at first moving the background around while you're jumping. Well, uh, once I got used to Murphy, I actually really liked using him. Plus he can do some really awesome things like deflecting fireballs away from you at just the right moment. For me, it was the crazy variety that I enjoyed the most. One minute I'd be fighting a monstrous luchador, the next I'd be turned into a chicken while Murphy tunneled through giant cakes for me. I guess you can have your cake and eat it too. No affirmative. And speaking of cakes, I was impressed with how many secrets they baked into every level. Uh, collecting all the lums and rescuing every teensy will test even the most skilled gamers. Yeah, they sure have crammed a lot into this game, haven't they? As well as all the new levels, they've also included a bunch of older levels from their last game, Rayman Origins, with extra secrets scattered about for you to find. Collecting everything in the game is definitely a big challenge, but the co-op balances out that difficulty. In co-op, you don't have to restart when you die, you're just turned into a balloon. So as long as one of the other players is alive, they can keep bringing you back to life. Yeah, playing this in tandem will be perfect for younger spawnlings, I think. Just having someone who's a little bit more experienced with this kind of platformer can be a big help in some of those trickier sections. Mm. All right, Darren, let's do this. Teamwork. Oh, Teamwork is key. Remember your training and you will survive. Okay. Uh, 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 oh, 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 no! Oh, 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 wait! Oh, oh, oh dear. Save I'll me, just, Darren. Uh, don't Save worry, me. I'll just... Uh... Save me. Ah, back. Thank you, Darren. I'm not, I'm not actually really doing badly, Darren. I am showing you the mechanics of, of how to save your friends. I'm teaching you about teamwork, really. I'm not actually dying myself. Oh, I'm dead. Well, even though I still think it was your fault, Darren, thank you so much for saving my bacon. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, we should also mention some of the other modes, like the soccer shootout minigame. Goal! Yeah, at first I thought this was a really odd mode to add. But after playing it for five minutes, I realised it's there because it's so much fun. I mean, who doesn't want to kick flaming soccer balls around? And there are even online challenges where you can put your Rain Manly skills to the test trying to get on the daily leaderboards. What did you think overall, Hex? You know, as soon as I finished it, I just dived straight back in so I could beat my times and find all the secrets that I missed. And I can't believe how varied all the levels were. I, I just love this. I'm giving it nine and a half. Yeah, after the last game, which was very good, I was expecting big things and they delivered. It just kept mixing up the gameplay with creative ideas and, oh, I think it's fantastic and it sits right up there now with Mario and Sonic. I'm giving it nine and a half out of ten rubber chickens. Well, Spawnlings, that's all the time we have for this week. Oh, if you'd like a few more minutes, I could always manipulate the time stream um, once again. Uh, no, Darren, that's fine. I think once per episode is more than enough. Plus, I can't wait to get to next week's show because we're going to have a look at the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. <laughs> To go with those ninjas, we'll have some pirates too. Yar, yar. Did you know it is an age old internet debate whether pirates could beat ninjas in a fight? Or vice versa? It's a fascinating dilemma. Who would win? Well, obviously, ninjas. Um, no, I think pirates would win in a fight between the two. <laughs> I used to think pirates, but now I think yeah, ninjas. Yeah, because pirates have so pistols sneaky. and a blunderbuss. <clears throat> I and think they... this is something we need to resolve once and for all on next week's show. Until then, Darren out. Hex out. Sancho out. So anyway, because no. Because they have like, ships so that sail the high seas and the cannons. Yeah. And, it, and you know, they, run, they run it up to the, to the island. N ninjas, they get off on the island. Ninjas already there. And they dig up like more weapon caches yeah. that and they've you know hidden what? on the island. Ninjas are hiding in the weapon caches. Thank you.